flora. I, I'm, actually, if I could backtrack on that, um, I, I was doing some other work for the Wind Wildflower Society. I think it was for the NEPCOP series. Yeah. And in, in doing that, I was not called upon to illustrate seeds or anything of that type. But in, at Harvard, going through these collections, particularly with the grasses, and I think this was a Carex group that I was working on, that I, I, was, I would lay out these, these specimens that I've taken out of the stacks and lay them out on the table, and I'd probably pick anywhere from about four to six of them and try to pick out of those the common denominator that I would draw that would make it uh, show the best what this plant should look like. And what I noted that this, these half a dozen or so, this happened quite a few times, there might be a small envelope in there uh, attached to the sheet that the specimen was on. <clears throat> and I would get curious about that, <clears throat> see what's in it. And I remember opening these envelopes with a particular group and seeing nothing in any of the envelopes. Yet these, these specimens represented uh, something that might have been collected 10 years ago or 100 years ago or more, and, all, and by different people in different places throughout New England. And none of them would have made these envelopes and put nothing in them. So I went back, got my little A-power lens, opened up the first one and found specks of dust. And every one of those envelopes had specks of dust in them. <clears throat> so I took a razor blade, wet it, picked up something, went to the microscope, and found that they were seeds. And they were, these were grasses that were somewhat difficult to identify even when they were side by side. Yet the seeds were spectacularly beautiful. They all had common denominators, but they also had characteristics in color and pattern that made them totally unique and would be easily, easily identifiable if you knew what they were without the original, without the final plant there. And that, that was just fascinating to me. I mean, I love that sort of discovery, discovering under a microscope the way you do when you go out walking and you come across something you haven't seen before, you something you've seen before in a different aspect of it. So when, when I was asked to participate and illustrate the flora, that was one of the things I was hoping was happening, that what we would be doing would not just be drawing the plant as it was, but going into getting the microscope, using the microscope, looking at these things even closer. But that was the most exciting part for, the, for that particular project. <clears throat> Yeah, that was definitely true for me, too. I feel like I learned a lot more about botany. And, you know, I was a plant ecologist, a botanist, you know, um, for a lot of years. But being able to put these things under a microscope and really understand the anatomy of a plant, I don't really think, and this is true confession, that I really understood what a composite, like a daisy, really was made out of. I got to see those disc flowers and those ray flowers up close and personal. Mm -hmm. um, and and being able to pop living material, I'd go out in my yard and I'd find, you know, the species I was supposed to um, be drawing and to pop that under a microscope and suddenly have it have it really click. This is what this really is. So it was a learning experience all the way through.